on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. What is the Super Bowl, a nearly 12 pound speckled trout, a socolade jigging pole, and a sheephead whisperer all have in common? Uh, your arm's gonna be wore out by the end of the day. What a war, what a fight. Makes a great day on the water, and it's always fun to be a part of Bayou Wild TV. We'll show you as we hit the waters of Lake Pontchartrain for a uniquely wild fishing adventure and an equally one of a kind fishing story. Fight your fish to the boat. I get the net under her, I'm holding the rod up, I get her in the net, I'm trying to lift her up out the water. She jumps straight up out the net and hits the water like a torpedo. And nothing but drag going out. Closed captioning made possible by Explore Kayak Adventure Company. Fishing, sightseeing to photography tours, everything to make your paddling adventure happen. See Explore Kayak Adventure Company on Facebook and Instagram. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacop. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Our journey this week starts at Wrigley's Marina in Slidell. Here you'll find some impressive fish mounts decorating the walls. A closer look reveals one of the heaviest specks weighed in Louisiana. Wow, just think about it. My fish was caught 22 years ago already. I mean, Leon's fish was 50 years old when he caught his. A lot of people in Louisiana do claim my fish to be, you know, number one in the state. Traveling just a couple of miles down the road along Salt Bayou, we meet Captain Kenny Krieger, the man behind this catch of a lifetime. Nineteen ninety nine Super Bowl Sunday. Well, I woke up that morning, it was twenty six degrees. The wind was blowing fifteen to twenty out the northwest. I hooked up the boat and I went down to Tights Marina. Nobody there. I was the only boat that backed down the ramp and launched. I headed out to the old Highway 11 bridge, kind of protected a little bit from the wind. I made three or four casts, and my first hit was very, very slight. I mean, it was so cold, you could barely feel that bump. I set the hook on, it was a five pound trout. The water was filthy dirty. I was always told you can't catch trout in dirty water, but that was. Made three or four more casts, four pound fish. Three or four more casts, five pound fish. I just kept working my way down the bridge. On my 13th fish, I felt a little thump. I leaned back and set the hook and that rod just doubled over. So I'm fighting this fish, trying to get it to the boat. The fish made a pass on the side of the boat about a foot under the water and all I could see was a shadow. And I seen almost three foot long, I'm thinking, man, this has got to be a golf fish or whatever. But when she passed, went to the front of the boat, I just leaned back on her. She came and she opened that big yellow mouth and she started shaking that head on top of the water, but she was so big it looked like slow motion. Fight the fish to the boat. I get the net under her, I'm holding the rod up. I get her in the net, I'm trying to lift her up out the water. She jumps straight up out the net and hits the water like a torpedo. And nothing but drag going out. <laughs> OK, 
okay, everything starts shaking on me. Legs start shaking, hands start shaking. Now I'm starting to talk to the Lord. Please, Lord, let me get it back to the boat one more time. So I get it back to the boat, I get the net under, I'm thinking I gotta do something different. I start to lift her up out the water, I didn't even look. I just threw the pole to the bottom of the boat, grabbed the net with two hands, flipped her in. She went down on the floor, I sat down. I was so exhausted, my adrenaline was pumping, my heart was racing, my hands were shaking. I'm just sitting there looking at that fish on the floor and could not believe how big that fish was. Well, Kenny Krieger's speckled trout brings back a lot of memories for me. I got a call that night, it was Super Bowl Sunday, and I drove to his house. I said, we got to get a picture of this fish. And before you know it, it was recognized as the number two. And arguably, arguably a lot of people believe that it is actually the number one speckled trout ever caught. Later on that year, I, uh, I bought me a ticket in a Star Tournament Rodeo, the CCA Rodeo, caught Tag Redfish. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And, and after I caught the tag redfish, I had two charter boat captains. Both of them came to me and said, Kenny, you got the recognition from your speckled trout. Now you go out there and you win a brand new boat motor and trailer. Hey man, it's time you get your captain's license and start chartering. Coming up next, learn how Captain Kenny Krieger went from being a name synonymous with speckled trout to a man now known as the Sheep's Head Whisperer. So I, I built my reputation on sheep fish. Some captains chase trout, some captains chase redfish. I chase fish. Whatever's biting, that's what I go after. I know I always catch a boatload of sheep fish. Don't be that guy, unregistered who catches a tag bass, misses out on cash, a boat, or a truck. Don't be that guy, sign up today at BassCashBash.com. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Today we're kind of on an experimental trip, and those of you who like to fish with light tackle, ultra light tackle, you're gonna love this. We're gonna head out to Lake Pontchartrain with the sheephead king, Kenny Krieger, and we got Blaine Salter here with some of his rods, and we're gonna give them the ultimate test. Today we had the idea of uh, taking the Salter Jig and Pole Elite Series model, which I thought about it in the past for quite some time, and I got a lot of requests for some cross a crossover rod in the saltwater, and I was tickled pink when Mr. Don called me and said, look, we got an invite with Captain Kenny, and we were gonna go out and target some sheephead. Don was a little nervous starting out, knowing we're fishing with light tackle, and uh, a rod that's usually made for fresh water it, uh, it held up great. We vertical jigged, we were able to pitch in the areas. Uh, the wind didn't affect us too much as Captain Kenny, like I said, put us right on the fish. Ooh, I'm gonna bend in that hole. <laughs> uh, I love to target sheephead. It's a fine eating fish. Uh, very easy for people to learn how to catch. Now the old timers, when I learned with my father and my grandfather, they used to use the old scraper. They'd scrape the barnacles off the pilings. My daddy would bring a bucket of big old black clams, 
We bust them open with a hammer and chum it all around the boat. That would really, really bring them in. There's so many sheephead right now, though, you don't even have to go through all that. Double hook up. Oh, it's a... All right. All right, she's got one, too. You just find your good spot along the bridge with a good tide movement, straight down by the pilot. I like the Carolina rig, but I really enjoy talking in sheephead. That's a good one, now. Yes, indeed. Nice. Oh, yeah. Hey, I think we're starting something here, folks. When we started out, we made a little further pitch, say 15 to 20 feet out. And uh, depending on your wind, uh, what I noticed is that I couldn't feel the bite because I had my rod tip up too high. When you're fighting any wind, it's hard to feel a slight bite. Martha actually accidentally came across this. She had lost a hook, so she shortened up her leader. And I said, hmm, maybe if I shorten up a leader, I can tell the difference between that weight and that hook. And that was a huge difference. I could actually feel everything I was doing. And when I could feel just a little vibration every time I set the hook, I got him. It's almost like sackle fishing on a light bite. There he is. <laughs> Now, what you do with it? Let's see. I'm a fire rider. Shortening that leader up made a huge difference for me because as I picked that weight up, I could feel that light bite, and that made the difference. I, I didn't miss any more fish after I figured out that little pattern. With a heavier rod, with heavier line, I just don't think you feel that bite or fighting any wind or wind slack. You're just not gonna feel it. You're gonna reel up and he's gonna have you bait every time, I think. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, I think you come on. You know, I knew it could be done. Uh, I didn't know how well we would do with it, but we, we had a good day. I mean, if it had been a calm day, we probably would have caught 50, 60 sheephead. I mean, we was only out there a few hours and we caught 20 nice ones. I hope it starts a new trend. People give it a try because it is absolutely fun. It really is. It, it makes Kate's and Sheephead a whole new world. Put it to you that way. You're not done yet. All right, hey. Oh, they get really big. Biggest one I've ever caught was 10 pounds, but there's an average fish from about two to about five pounds is your average. Every now and then you'll get a six, seven, eight pound mixed in. It doesn't matter who you are, you can just wear that fish out and people don't realize, but that longer rod, it's putting tension and it's putting, it's wearing that fish out from the time that hook is set. And you're not wearing yourself out by pulling in, it's just, you know, your, your old school cane pole fishing. With a super cane pole, it's long, you just flip it out, and once you get in the right position with always having that, that rod under the elbow, it's the way to go if you want some light tackle and a fun fight on a rod that'll hold up definitely on some sheep. Oil. That's a good one now. Yes, indeed. Nice one, nice one. Oh, yeah. He's just gonna come over here. I'll come right here and park all day long through the whole ice. <laughs> He's gonna have 47 sheep at his store. I found the, uh, these rods that we use today work really, really well. They light, they flimsy. It was such a subtle bite, almost like catching a little perch or something. But with that pole, you couldn't miss. You could feel every time they touched that bait. I got it. Go ahead, Captain. I got one. Captain got one. About time, huh? All right. Captain's Good. on the board. Yeah, I'm on the board. That's fun on that pole, Boy, man. That's you fun. Have a blast, That's man. fun on that pole. Well, we've we've always had questions. Uh, even from the time I was 
in my early teens. Hey JB, are you making a longer rod for salt water? I've even had questions on whether you could fish specks with them. But dad was mostly a, a, a freshwater guy. Look, I love fishing. It, it brings out a whole new era, hopefully. You talk about a fun trip. It's one of the funnest trips I've been on. A lot of action. A lot of people don't like to fish them because they're hard to clean, but uh, it's a very fine eating fish once you learn how to clean them. Kenny Krieger isn't the only saltwater fishing guide in Louisiana that'll tell you not to throw back the undesirables. Here in Grand Isle, Captain Darrell Carpenter demonstrates an easy way to yield some fresh sheephead fillets. My personal experience with sheephead, you come in with a scar cut, you're just a cut right here to open it up. Then you, take, you can take the fish and stand it on his belly and trace out the rib cage, which is right below the lateral line. From there, you come in and you just start taking your fillet off of the backbone. And then from here, you can either leave it on the scales to cook it that way, or you just take the fillet off of the scales and there's your fillet. Coming up, you won't believe what Chef John Foltz is getting ready to do with this pretty black drum. And I'm gonna christen him first, you know. Oh, he so needed it, all right. <laughs> My name's James Loop, and I won the uh, 2020 Chevy 1500. It was uh, first day at roughly 5, 36 o'clock in the evening. I was like, let's stay fishing. And she's like, ah, maybe we need to get back to the launch, you know? <laughs> yeah, I had a blast. It was a great summer tournament. Thank you, Super Chevy dealers, for my 2020 Silverado. I've been using Louisiana fish fry products so much, even the kids are getting into it. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil, a great crawfish every time. And whether you're boiling crawfish, shrimp, or crabs, Louisiana fish fry products use the perfect blend of garlic, onion, spices, and salt for your seafood boils. So look for the bright yellow bag and pour and boil with Louisiana fish fry products. Looking for cleaner energy? Propane can do that. When you are cooking with clean, affordable propane, you're cooking with gas. In the wintertime, nothing heats a home like Louisiana propane. And when you need hot water, propane's got you covered. Oh, and you won't regret that propane generator when the power goes out. Fuel for our future. I'm Miss Louisiana Courtney Hammonds. For more information and to find a propane dealer near you, visit louisianapropane.com. Don't be that guy, unregistered who catches a tagged bass, misses out on cash, a boat, or a truck. Don't be that guy, sign up today at BassCashBash.com. Continuing this week's adventure, we're visiting White Oak Estate and Gardens in Baton Rouge. When it comes to developing recipes for underappreciated fish, there's no better advice to seek and from the kitchen of Louisiana's Outdoor Cooking Authority, Chef John Foltz. There's so many of these species, not only in the fish, uh, uh, in the area of fish, but also meat varieties that too often we just walk away from because of the convenience of something else or an attitude that somebody has, I don't know if I should eat this or that. But this is a perfect example of a great fish for a great dish, and I'm glad uh, you recommend it. Well, you know, it's the first cousin to the red drum. It's right. the black drum. It's basically in the same family, but I find it to be a much sweeter fish, much more plentiful, and a lot of people just for some reason don't want to deal with them. But I tell you, they're missing out, and today they're going to learn something about good Well, and I, re and I really uh, I really like it. The price is right. Uh, Absolutely. You know, that, that, that's the good news. And, of course, so what we're doing today, we're actually making a very classic uh, in most of the homes in South Louisiana, the boulettes were made with different types of meats, but in season, the, uh, the, the fish and shrimp and all of this, the boulettes made with seafood. So, so we've actually poached this uh, black drum here in a little seasoned water. We actually put a little crab oil 
in the water, salt, pepper, granulated garlic, brought it to a boil, reduced the boil all the way to just where the water danced a little bit. Look, look, look at the meat. Ooh, look I mean, at the, the meat, meat is how really, pretty it is. It, too. it really is. It's a beautiful meat. It's just delicious. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to saute our vegetables real fast. Onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic. It's always the same, guys. Onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic. That's where we start everything. You want to throw some of that meat in here for me? All right. Uh, look at the chunks of that uh, of that uh, black drum. Just just a beautiful fish. Okay, so I got that going in. I'm gonna turn the fire off on this right now. Now, why don't you go ahead and throw that uh, that egg in here? Just kind of just throw it in. I'm gonna just kind of stir it around in there. Even though I normally put it in to the bowl itself, I'm gonna just kind of coat this really well and then I'm going to add the breadcrumbs to it. So I'm going to go right into the bowl. Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. All the all of the fish, the sea. And look, you see the color? Look at the color in that. A red, the green, all of those beautiful colors. Look at that bone right there. We're going to get, get that one. Yeah, you see, that's why I'm going in mm -hmm. nice and easy here. So I'm going to go in and do that right there. And then down a little bit of the seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. You know, we're just going to put a little bit of that in. That's going to hold it all together. A little bit green onions, of course. I love them green oh, onions. Oh, yeah. You got, well, yeah. it's all for color and flavor. A little bit hot sauce into it. You don't mind, No, huh? no, no. Put Throw a little, down, little hot sauce yeah. in there. And if you take a, take that fork head and kind of mix all of that together, and we're going to let that cool for a second, and then we're going to roll it into the balls, fry them, and, uh, and you just put a big platter of them on the table. I mean, it's just a really great, great dish. Back with our black drum and crab claw brulette right after. All right. I'm Courtney Hammonds on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I've spent hundreds of hours practicing piano. That preparation paid off when I won a couple of talent awards and the title of Miss Louisiana. The Louisiana Propane Dealers are also pretty talented and want you to be prepared for when the power goes out. Visit louisianapropane.com to find out about propane generators and other safety tips. Louisiana Propane, it truly is a fuel for our future. One of the reasons why Double D has been around for 50 years is because we are consistent with what built the business. And we go to great lengths to make sure that when you bring a, a deer or a hog or whatever it may be, your meat stays your meat all the way through the process. But we want to be as true to the original intent, which is a local meat company. And, and that's something that we want to maintain for as long as the Lord lets us do it. Well, we're here with Chef John Foltz, who has sometimes been called a magician. I mean, look at this transformation <laughs> from this basically homely black drum, yeah. good fish though, to this. Oh, the meat on that fish is fantastic. And Don, uh, we're serving it with a little ramelade, mm -hmm. a little red ramelade, and a little uh, tartar sauce right next to it. The only other thing I would serve with it would be a nice little uh, Sauvignon Blanc like this. And of course, I would add a little, uh, just on oh, this special okay. day, just a, just a little drip of, of, uh, of my, my bourbon into my shard. You don't mind, I huh? don't mind at all. <laughs> To Let's, the black drum, huh? To the black <laughs> drum. I get, pay a little homage to a great fish, y'all. I, I tell you, it's, it's magnificent. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for being with us.
We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. Don't be that guy, unregistered who catches a tag bass, misses out on cash, a boat, or a truck. Don't be that guy. Sign up today at BassCashBash.com. Well, I've been talking about this kind of a trip for a while, but I've been thinking about it for a lot longer. Um, knowing that the sheephead, you hang tight to those pylons and it's kind of a straight drop, I always thought that if you had either a regular conventional cane pole or the new fiberglass cane poles, it would be an effective way to catch them. And today it certainly proved that it is definitely that. This week's adventure was one of excitement. It was one of technique and one of appreciation. Well, Sheephead starts off with the name, you know, Sheephead. It doesn't sound very appetizing. Then you get a look at the fish from the front, you see those big chopper teeth that they got, the big sharp dorsal fin. It's a pretty imposing looking fish. It's an ugly fish, it's not pretty. Uh, I've written stories about it, called it the, the Rodney Dangerfield fish because it gets no respect. But it really should, because not only is it a great fighting fish, it's very plentiful, and they're very good to eat. I've got clients now that come in from all over different states. All they want to catch is sheephead. Uh, your arm's going to be wore out by the end of the day. What a war, what a fight. Makes a great day on the water, and it's always fun to be a part of Bayou Wild TV. Oh well, yeah, nice one. It is these pursuits that challenge us to keep the sport of fishing fun while telling unique stories of the people who celebrate the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage of Bayou Wild.